Hi, welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This is Coastal Landforms uh, video. This is all about the coast, the interaction between land and sea, and a beautiful dynamic interface between different landscapes and uh, oceanic, terrestrial landscapes, and the combination of the two, plus all the different spheres that go into this with the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the geosphere, the biosphere, all living things. Um, even the cryosphere and certain cold beaches with uh, glacial ice or um, sea ice present, um, permafrost on the ground. So you've got this beautiful, amazing place. And pretty much every country or most countries in the world have a coastline and can experience this, this beautiful environment. And some, beautiful, some beaches are more beautiful than others. Um, I like any beach, but there are certain beaches that just take my breath away. And, uh, you know, it's awesome to chat about it. And this video is going to discuss the intro to coasts and then the other videos looking at different types of landforms and how these form, how these are generated, how they work with weather and erosion and deposition. So I'll shout out to the uh, top right picture right here. This is a, a picture of Will Coates in Cornwall, England. Uh, on the peninsula of the southwest of England. It's uh, obviously a clift uh, beach and the very, very high macro tidal um, range and the beach actually goes really up into the uh, different uh, bays and coves uh, and then goes out at low tide really far and the beach gets exposed and beautiful flat uh, beach, uh, very low gradient and uh, yeah, ocean's cold, but I grew up right near, like right near this beach I spent my summers, actually most of the year at this, at this, at this beach, and uh, obviously holds, amazing, and my personal opinion, the most beautiful beach in the world. So this video is going to discuss uh, three things, basically. What is the coastline? So how do we define it? How do we uh, differentiate it between different areas of the land and ocean and that part of the interface? Um, how are they classified or, or characterized? The different types of coasts? Uh, there are different types of coasts based on the environment and based on certain factors which we'll get into. And why uh, are these coastlines, coasts, beaches, shorelines uh, termed a dynamic interface? All right, so join me now. So what is a coastline? A coastline is basically is defined as the area from the seashore to inland, inland, uh, basically until there is a change in terrain or landscape. Now, some areas of the coast can have a very large, wide coastline that goes inland for many miles, uh, parts of the Atlantic uh, East Coast of America, around the Gulf, where you, know, you can go 10, 15, 30, 50 miles inland away from the ocean. You can't even see it, and you still have those dunes, the sandy soil, the very low topography, no hills, very similar uh, landscape and terrain and topography as the beach. Whereas in some areas of the world, you get a small little strip of beach, and then there's a complete change of environment over the, over the next hill or over the, you know, a few feet away. So the coast is obviously um, dependent on location. It is not consistent, and it's always changing. This is an area where you can see changes that happen over years, not over millions of years, but the time scale that cha things change is very quick around the coastlines. So it's great to study changes, geomorphology, uh, geologic history, if it's the old coast or pretty recent coast, all the changes that happen. So it's a great place to, uh, to study. Another term you might hear is coastal zone. A coastal zone is basically the interface zone. It is pretty much uh, extends from the land 
okay, from the land extends out into the ocean or the sea up until the, the edge of the Connell Shelf. Connell Shelf is the submerged part of the land, it's the beach that goes out through and to the uh, seabed, and it's gentle, um, a gentle descent or gradient down into deeper areas of the ocean till it gets to the Connell Slope, uh, which changes the degree, which is then a sharp um, drop in, uh, no, increase in depth down to the ocean floor. So Earth has around 40,000 kilometers of coastline. Now these coastlines could be tropical. They could be temperate. They could be um, uh, cold or let's say Arctic or Antarctic. Okay, subpolar. Oops, sub polar. So based on latitude, which then relates to climate and wind patterns and pressure and obviously precipitation. Okay, so you've got this long strip of land which is in contact with the ocean. Now, you can also discuss this in terms of lakes, very large lakes, the Great Lakes um, in North America, or some large lakes in Africa, uh, or large lakes in Europe or Asia. But generally, we discuss this with oceans. But you can relate it to, to lakes if you want. So now, like the factors that control the development or the formation of a certain kind of coastline. Before we get into the kinds, we've got to figure out what the driving force is behind these coastlines. Now, when you're looking at this, you're looking at obviously geologic time. So the time before the present. What is happening? What happened? What happened in the past? To create this current environment okay so the factors are basically the first one is tectonics so this is a very major one so whether you have a uh, active margin or you have a subduction trench you have a conversion plate boundary or you have a, a diversion plate boundary or um, or you have a ridge or a rise, but you do have um, the the ability to move continents over time with tectonics. Now, this could be either uplift, this could be collision, this could be uh, uh, faulting or thrusting, depends on the angle. And this can cr uh, create orogenic belts, orogenic belts, which we know as mountain ranges. This can also cause subduction and cause uh, there to be a subducted plate, uh, like the Faradon plate um, in the Pacific, which went under and caused there to be a, uh, you know, a upwelling area and creates the basin and range. In the, in the southwest of America. So tectonics is a large scale um, control over a long period of time, millions of years, on the formation of coasts. The next thing which, which helps develop the coastline is the exposure to ocean currents, wind, and wave action. Now, the wind could be uh, varied, could be of different strengths. Could also be in terms of storms or hurricanes or tropical um, cyclones. Hurricanes in the Atlantic uh, in the Pacific is uh, going to be hurricanes and typhoons and cyclones. 
and obviously wave action. So wind and, 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 and wave action is to do with the energy and ocean currents and also be dictated by the wind um, and obviously in density differences between temperature and uh, salinity. So the wave action, again, it could be varied, it could be consistent, depends on the fetch, depends on the location, depends on the wind, and uh, these can all help to develop and characterize the coastal. The third factor is tidal range and tidal current. Now, this is to do with the moon and the sun and gravity, the pull and the effect it has on the water and the oceans, uh, whether it's diurnal, semi-diurnal, it's a certain pattern, and the current is the movement of water caused or created by the tidal effect, tidal force, okay? So that, again, can control the coastline. So a beach also can be built up or it can be uh, degraded and eroded and taken away and removed and it can get larger or smaller based on the availability of sediment. So that can also be a factor that characterizes the shape or the type of coastline you have is the sediment uh, that is transported uh, to the beach. Now, whether that is from uh, a river estuary, a river delta, but mostly from ocean currents. The final factor that goes into coastal uh, development and formation, different types, is the climate. Again, uh, based on latitude, based on the uh, precipitation, based on the wind, wind direction, the pressure, um, based on the um, based on the movement of um, water and waves and storms. So climate is a big thing, which again, I mentioned earlier, but it can also link up to other uh, factors as well. But in the combination, this is a very large topic that can, can, can control formation of the coastline. So when we can classify coasts is in two ways. So there's two types. There's emergent. And there is submergent. All right, so emergent is uh, to do with um, recent tectonics and uplift, maybe collision. And there is movement up, which exposes more of the coastline. Could also be climate, where um, during the last ice age, more water was turned to ice, and the sea level dropped obviously exposing more land around the coast. Submergent is the opposite. So sea level can rise and cover up and uh, submerge areas of the coastline, which are low lying areas of the coastline, which is low lying. And again, it can be uh, tectonic as well. So we've got emergent and submergent. That's one way of classifying the uh, coastline. Another uh, way to differentiate between coasts is to dive into five different types of the current situation of their coastline situation. So the first one is submerged. We discussed that before. Submerged coastline uh, you're looking at fjords up in Scandinavia, which are submerged uh, old glacial valleys, which have been uh, very V-shaped, very um, uh, like a trough, like very sharp and deep uh, valleys. Or you've got a rear, which is more tropical, 
which is where you have a submerged stream um, and submerged river delta, which then creates um, an estuary. And we get this a lot along the, um, the North American eastern seaboard, Atlantic coast, and Gulf of Mexico. Next, you get a barrier island coastline. This is basically a recent emergent uh, coastline where you have a barrier island, which is a parallel uh, area of sand or uh, deposited material. Uh, it's unconsolidated and it basically accumulates off the coast parallel to it, uh, creating a little barrier, which is called a barrier island, and then uh, creates a lagoon or a um, area of water behind it between, between that, the barrier island and the mainland, the coastline, the mainland. And um, it uh, basically is caused by winds, winds and wave action. We get this also along the uh, North American coastline, lost across um, parts of uh, Texas, Gulf of Mexico, um, North and South Carolina and Georgia. And uh, yeah, very uh, popular in that, those states. Next is a delta coastline. This is to do with rivers and river deltas. That's classic one, Mississippi, the Nile, the Amazon, uh, the Ganges. You've got these beautiful deltas, these fan-like uh, triangle uh, formations of deposited material. And in terms of the Mississippi, it goes into the Gulf of Mexico, and this is a... Uh, marginal sea coastline. The marginal sea is another classification based on very low topography, a um, bit like submerged coastline, but with a large river um, basically finishing up at the ocean and depositing all the material. Volcanic islands, that could be a hot spot, that could be any kind of tectonics, that could be um, any seamount that, um, that has risen up and now is part, that's gone above the uh, ocean surface and now become a new island, um, create a new, new coastline, obviously, and a coral coastline that is mostly tropical from 30 degrees north to 25 degrees south in the tropics, Ooh, south and uh, requires temperature of the water to be above 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, so in excess. Obviously, in some parts of the tropics, that uh, water temperature is way above uh, 68 or 20 degrees Celsius and can sustain a very uh, healthy coral uh, environment and ecosystem. Last coastline we have is called a fault coastline. Again, this is tectonics. Can also be emergent in nature and uh, can push up and create uplift of a certain area. And the beach can actually be on the beach or shoreline can be actually on the uh, the fault scarp, which is the exposed part of the fault. There's tensional or usually tensional. Um, uh, forces acting upon the, the fault line, causing one side to drop, which is called a, a graben or graben or half graben. And this is uh, common in uh, South America, in Chile or Chile, where they have this happen. And the coast actually goes all the way up to the uh, fault scarp of the, basically, basically the cliff. All right. So um, that is the the differentiation and the types of coasts. Um, I'll be doing videos on each kind of coastline, cliff coastline and flat coastline, um, and different types as shown here, and looking in more detail in certain areas of the world, like uh, the Outer Banks in Carolina, and going through all different landforms um, to do or associated with, with coastlines. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a nice day, and I hope to see you soon.